President Trump admitted on Sunday that his campaign tried to collude with Russia, capping off a busy weekend of tweeting and watching cable news. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Donald Trump loves doing three things, golfing, campaigning, and watching TV. He's our first retiree president. <laughs> Pretty soon, he's gonna put a retractable awning on the White House and sit out there with a word search puzzle, his shorts, and black socks. <laughs> and this weekend, Trump did all three of his favorite activities. On Friday night, he was at his golf course in New Jersey when he went on Twitter to attack LeBron James and CNN anchor Don Lemon. Now, remember, Trump has repeatedly insisted that he never watches CNN while simultaneously complaining about what he sees while watching CNN. You look at, like, a CNN, they'll have a council of seven people. And of the seven people, every one of them is against me. I'm saying, where do, we, uh, where do they even find these people? Uh, I'm so, not your doctor, Mr. Do President, but I would, I would recommend you watch less of them. I don't watch them at all. Oh. <laughs> That's like me saying, I don't watch Real Housewives, but Dorinda better watch out. Well, apparently Trump decided to tune in Friday night when CNN aired an interview with LeBron about a new public school LeBron opened for at-risk youth. Lemon asked him if he'd ever meet with Trump, and LeBron said this. What would you say to the president if he's sitting right here? Uh, I would never sit across from him. You would never? You want to talk to him? No. I said that across from Barack, though. <laughs> Donald Trump isn't an at-risk youth, but LeBron just took him to school. So Trump decided to soothe his ego the way he always does by surrounding himself with fawning supporters. On Saturday, he flew to Ohio to campaign for a local Republican congressman and concocted a fantasy about winning the women's vote in the 2016 election, which he actually lost by 12 points. I won the women. I won the women. Oh. <laughs> you know, when those numbers came, how is it possible? Because I never heard I was going to win the women. I said, I think the women like me. My wife, the first lady, Melania, said, the women really like you. They do like me. And I like them. But I said, how did we win the women? We won the women. <laughs> is it me, or is he starting to sound like late-stage Jerry Lewis? How do we win the women? We won the women. <laughs> That's right. Trump says he won the women. And we only had to pay off some of them. I love, I love how obviously fake this story is. But this is the part that really gives it away. My wife, the first lady, Melania, said, the women really like you. Can't you just see Melania on election night pouring over the exit polls with a green eye shade on? Darling, the women really like you, especially white women, age 80 to 110. <laughs> Trump wants us to think his wife talks to him. Look at her. Her body may be there, but her mind is on Amazon Prime shopping for a LeBron jersey. <laughs> you can tell. You can tell Trump's ego is really bruised this weekend because he ripped through some of his greatest hits on Saturday while adding a few new wrinkles, like when he bragged about his plan to create a space for us, but also seemed to imply that something was happening on Mars. I've also directed the Pentagon to begin the process of creating the sixth branch of the United States Armed Forces called the Space Force. Space. Very important. That's going to be great. Look, so much is happening now in space. I mean, your great defense. I'm not just talking about Mars and the moon. I'm talking about tremendous defense capability. What does he think is happening on Mars? <laughs> Mars is a great place. I've been there many times. In fact, it's red because they voted for me. <laughs> we, we won the Martians. They said we'd never win the Martians, but we won the Martians. My wife, First Lady Melania, she says, I think these Martians really like us. But it wouldn't be a Trump rally without a bizarre rant about how popular he is. This time, he was bragging about taking down a GOP congressman who was critical of him, Mark Sanford, after supporting Sanford's opponent in the primary. Now, when Sanford was governor in 2009, he famously had an affair with a woman in Argentina and told his wife he was hiking the Appalachian Trail. Trump has brought this up before, but he keeps getting the name of the Appalachian Trail wrong. Katie Arrington, South Carolina. She was behind by a lot and... She's fantastic, by the way. She's fantastic. And we endorsed her, and she beat a man that likes flamingo dancers from Argentina. You know about that. <laughs> he was supposed to be 
vacationing on the Tallahassee Trail, but he was actually in Argentina. I don't know. Jim, do they have a Tallahassee Trail in Argentina? I don't think, right? No, they don't, and they don't have one in America, either. <laughs> Tallahassee Trail sounds like a cheap ripoff of the Oregon Trail. <laughs> the year's 2018, and you must survive the treacherous journey from Tallahassee to your private gorse golf course in New Jersey. Your only supplies are a private jet and a bucket of KFC, and uh-oh, you have dementia. <laughs> also... Can we go back to this part of the clip for a second? She beat a man that likes flamingo dancers from Argentina. Flamingo dancers? <laughs> Do you mean flamenco dancers? <laughs> Everyone knows the famous dancing flamingos of Argentina. <laughs> of course, Trump would rather everyone talk about his attacks on LeBron or the Space Force than his mounting legal problems, which are getting worse by the day. As more information comes out, about that infamous Trump Tower meeting with the Russians in 2016. Now, remember, when we first learned about that meeting, the president's son, Don Jr., insisted that his father wasn't there. He also claimed the meeting was about a law sanctioning Russian officials called the Magnitsky Act, as well as Russia's response to that law, which was to ban Americans from adopting Russian children. The pretext of the meeting was, hey, we have information and there was, you know, some small size. I don't even remember what it was. It just was sort of nonsensical, uh, inane and garbled, and then quickly went on to uh, you know, a story about Russian adoption and how we could possibly help, and really that's where we shut it down, which is, wait a second, uh, what does this have to do with Did what you even we know what the, the McGinty Act was? I'd never even heard of it before, you know, that day. So his defense against Russian collusion is that he's an idiot who's also a bad person. <laughs> Did you know what the Magnitsky Act was? I had no idea, and as soon as they started talking about helping orphans, we shut it down. <laughs> also, can we go back to this for a second? There was, you know, some small size. I don't even remember what it was. It just was sort of nonsensical, uh, inane and garbled. Nonsensical, inane and garbled. So your father was there. <laughs> the dead giveaway. It was, it was nonsensical, inane and garbled. It was something about dancing flamingos on Mars. <laughs> so there you go. That was their story. It was about adoptions, not about getting dirt on Hillary Clinton. At least that was their story until yesterday, when Trump, in an effort to distance himself from the meeting tweeted that he wasn't there and admitted its real purpose. Here's a tweet that he sent out. He writes, quote, fake news reporting a complete fabrication that I am concerned about the meeting my wonderful son Donald had in Trump Tower. This was a meeting to get information on an opponent totally legal and done all the time in politics and it went nowhere. I did not know about it. He's so bad at this. <laughs> you guys, it's totally legal and I didn't know anything about it. Ask anyone I was hiking the Tallahassee Trail. So now, now that the president has admitted that he and his son lied repeatedly and that the meeting actually was about colluding with a foreign adversary, Trump's lawyers are trying a new argument, that even if he did collude, it's not a crime. Trump wrote on Twitter, quote, collusion is not a crime, but that doesn't matter because there was no collusion except by crooked Hillary and the Democrats. I've been sitting here looking in the federal code trying to find collusion. As a crime. <laughs> it's not. Collusion is not a crime. This was a meeting to get information from the Crown Prosecutor of Russia on Hillary Clinton's campaign. How would that be legal? Well, the question is how would it be illegal? How would it be illegal? I don't know. How about a conspiracy to violate election laws or conspiracy to defraud the United States? Seriously, how is it possible that these are the best lawyers the President of the United States can get? <laughs> They're like personal injury lawyers in that they're lawyers who personally injure their client. <laughs> Rudy Giuliani is the kind of lawyer who would spend all day chasing an ambulance only to realize it was an ice cream truck. <laughs> and then today, there were major developments in the trial of Trump's ex-campaign chairman, Paul Manafort. Manafort's business partner, Rick Gates, who was also Trump's deputy campaign chairman, testified against Manafort. And here is the real transcript from Gates' testimony. Were you involved in any criminal activity with Mr. Manafort? Yes. Did you commit any crimes with Manafort? Yes. Oh, my God, this whole thing is like a Law & Order episode that ends in the first five minutes. <laughs> did you do crimes? Yes, I did crimes. <laughs> this has been A Closer Look.